Could you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kirk Hammett, the guitar Metallica. I'm James, vocals and guitar. It's a real honor for me uh, to have an interview with you guys. So um, please let's start. Um, we got a new album. Uh, you just came, sorry, you just came over here in Holland like uh, last night. Yeah, yeah, we arrived uh, at about 12 o'clock last night. Flew in and uh, glad to be here. Yeah, it's a beautiful city, Amsterdam. And, you know, Holland has always been behind Metallica ever since the beginning. I can remember uh, uh, we played here in 1983 in Zwolle. I think it was the Rhino. Oh uh, yeah, the Art, yeah, Art Shock Festival. And that, uh, up to that point, that was like the biggest audience we had ever played in front of. It was like well, it's like five or six thousand people, and we were just blown away by by the love and and, and uh, respect that you know, all the people in Holland showed us from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Holland is, 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 is a place a very special part, of it, at least in my heart. Yeah. Do you still uh, remember a lot of gigs that you played here? Or like in uh, other countries? <coughs> yeah, know, we yeah. played other countries, I mean, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> I think we did, yeah. Pretty much every one that would have us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we even played Liechtenstein, and that's not even a country. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> What is it, in a city or something? I, well, isn't it like a, a city state or a, a, a city a city state? Yeah. That's what we would call it in America, a city state. It's been uh, uh, four years you've been uh, over here in Holland. And, um, what happened in those four years? Like, you didn't play much and uh, had some troubles? Oh, what troubles? Like, uh, you, you, you've, you've been in rehab, isn't it? That was no trouble. That was no <laughs> trouble, okay. That was, uh, yeah. Well, between Napster, Jason leaving, and uh, rehab, there was a there was there was a lot to deal with, uh, uh, personally and as a as a group called Metallica. You know, it was Jason leaving. Uh, well, I think really Napster started some of the some of that stuff mm -hmm. uh, in the famous Playboy interview that kind of showed. I mean, that was the first time where I think we were able to see. Uh, because we were interviewed separately at a time of break, that man, we're on. Our realities are completely different, and, mm -hmm. and the way we talked about each other when the others weren't in the room was just really disrespectful, and things were just not good. And That's we, one of the reasons that uh, Jason left. Well, he, I don't. I think he was fairly well. It was. It was in the article. You could see that he was on his way. He had. You know, we'd all chosen our way of escaping, uh, and mine was obvious. And his, I think, was escaping into his future. I think he had, he had for years planned some other thing outside of Metallica. Yeah, a lot of side projects. Yeah, uh, but something that I think he was willing to 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 go for. You know, and he, and he eventually did. And by the time we got to the to the to the to the hotel room with the therapist and with everyone sitting around to try and connect and let's figure this thing out you know let's work on this uh, he had made up his mind and it was it was it was obvious that it was a little too late for him to to be able to open up and fix some of this stuff he was very very determined to to uh, to do what he decided to do i mean we, we were ready to sit down there and work out any sort of uh, uh, differences and disagreements we had. I mean, we, we gave him that opportunity, but he wouldn't have any of it. I mean, he came to the meeting with a, a definite purpose, and he was going to ex execute that purpose. And that purpose was, you know, telling us that he didn't want to be a part of the band anymore. And, you know, it's, it's really ironic because if he would have stuck it out maybe just even a few days more, mm -hmm. you know, we could have all been here right now. But, you know, things like this happen for a reason. And, and so, I mean, we really just have to accept the facts, you know, as they unfold. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 And, but now you found a new guy like Rob Trillio. He's uh, ex bass player of uh, Suicidal Tendencies. And also, uh, also, Osborne's also. Yeah. How did you come up with him? Did you try a lot of guys? Well, we, we might have tried maybe uh, five or six guys. I mean, we didn't really have uh, a lot of prospects. I mean, we 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 had a very very short list, you know, and it was it was based more on, on you know people who we, we 
who we knew, who were friends of, of ours, and you know, Rob was was something was someone that we we didn't really know that much, but we kind of, well, at least I kind of instinct instinctually knew, you know, he 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 had the groove. Or something. He had the had yeah he had the sound, but you know the 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 missing. The missing bit of information was how was he as a person? I mean, we really didn't know him that well. We weren't really aware of what type of uh, personality he was, uh, and you know, I, I kind of uh, I, I took the time to go surfing with him at one point, you know, just to get to know him. And, and once I, I hung out with him for a, a two or three days, that's when I actually asked him if he was interested in uh, coming up and auditioning for us. And, when he, he said, yeah, you know, we, we kind of left it at that. And I said, well, you know, when we actually get around to auditioning people, we'll give you a call. And so five or six months later, we gave him a call. And he came down and, and auditioned. And it clicked. Well, you know, it, it kind of clicked the first time. But the second time around, it really, I, I felt, it really fell into place. How was he surfing? Surfing was good that day, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we surfed over two or three days, and we could, it was good. <laughs> Thank did, you. Did you try also uh, some, some try out some gigs with him already? Yeah, we've done some shows. Well, his first proper gig was in San Quentin. That <laughs> oh, that was in prison, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's something to tell his grandkids. <laughs> yeah. My first gig with the dog was in prison. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Uh, and then we did four shows at the uh, famous for us. Uh, Fillmore West uh, in San Francisco, and uh, there, you know, it holds, it's, you know, about a thousand people, and it was really cool playing a, you know, set list of old things, you know, getting Rob tuned in to some of the older stuff. Yeah. And you know, How's Rob, he doing that? he's doing awesome, you know, and I, I, I hope that he's able to speak up and say that, hey, <laughs> slow down, I need help or something, you know, but he's just, he's a pro and he's. He's, he Down loves the challenge, yeah. and he steps up to the challenge, and he's had to learn like 40 songs besides all the new stuff, you know, and he's done an awesome job, you know, and, you know, seeing him on stage playing with him is so powerful, uh, and, you know, he keeps telling me, just wait till I get dialed in, it's like, whoa, yeah. man, you know, whoa. Yeah. it he, might be like the more. last 5% yeah, yeah. that he needs to dial in, but, but for him to be at his peak performance, you know, it's important to him like it is to us. It's yeah. great also watching this guy play. So. Yeah, he's he, he he's a force on stage. I mean, at least you know, watching him uh, 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 perform. I mean, he he he's really really great at it. You know, and it, it's it's inspiring for me. You know, to to, to see him on the other side of the stage doing his thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it really pushes myself, and I, I I love that that fact. You know, he he really steps up. I mean. We were doing songs uh, the, uh, at the Fillmore shows. We, we were doing songs that he learned, like maybe like a couple hours before. I mean, that's how much he steps up. I mean, he's he, listening in the car to on, the, on his way to the gig. And uh, pretty much, okay, yeah. No, you know, he has his headphones on, yeah. his CD player, and yeah. like you know, it's like you know, we're going on stage in five half minutes. an hour, <laughs> you know, five minutes really. You know, and he's there, you know, they're giving it one final listen and making sure that he knows you know all this, uh, all the parts and. He, he's great. I mean, he's such a positive force. And, you know, at this point in the game, you know, to have a positive uh, force like him is just very welcomed. Talking about the new album, The Saint Anger, uh, when did you start writing for this new album? You know, well, we started writing that, oh, it was a little over two years ago. Uh, yeah. Wasn't it the big, like maybe January of uh, 2001? Something like that. Yeah, uh, we went into a place called the Presidio, which is an old military uh, stronghold in San Francisco. It's now uh, not used for military anymore. Mm -hmm. We went in there, found a building that worked out great, moved all our gear in there. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to find a house, but couldn't, so we went in there. You could pick uh, your own place to, to write songs. Yeah, we wanted to not go in the studio again, the same old stale environment. Okay. Uh, we wanted to move on. Mm -hmm make the rooms dictate how it sounded instead of us controlling it all. So go in and just use whatever was there and jam. So we started there uh, and that was, you know, soon after Jason was out of the picture uh, and on to his, you know, move and trying to find his happiness, which we hope he does find. Um, and then, then the rehab thing started, boy, 
when did I go away? It was probably about, June, oh, it was June. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, six months after we had started. Um, so yeah, it was it was long. Mm -hmm. so when you came out, you had some new ideas for for the new music. Or uh, was it like not that I not that I knew of. You know, all of this I had not brought a guitar and not thought about music. I really wanted to unplug from that and worked on me. And you know, it was like the first time in my life that I you know the band came second. You know, mm -hmm. and it was it was scary, but it was also it felt good. I could respect myself in that manner. Yeah. So coming back, I mean, there was plenty of material, you know, after. Lyric, lyric wise also. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, without really trying. <laughs> yeah. Just like the floodgates opened. Uh, and, and it was just flowing, I mean, and, and riffs too. There was no lack of, of just inspiration mm. in, that, in that, well, in this place we call HQ now, headquarters. Uh, you know, before all the troubles had started, we had bought a building. It was our old rehearsal place, which I think helped ground us through all of the rough, troubling times. And uh, you know, just the the vision of us being in there one day was enough to pull us through some of this rough stuff. And the place is awesome. It's a cool. sanctuary. It's yeah, a safe it's haven. It's a clubhouse. It's playground. Everything in it. Uh, it's amps for days. Guitar. You just, you know, it is a playground, literally. Yeah. You also uh, had some um, lyric wise uh, um, on, on the album. You wrote some new lyrics for the album, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we for all. The first time. Yeah, yeah we all. Oh, what's yeah. What's that? Yeah, a couple yeah. of minutes. Yeah, okay. Finish. All right. Okay. Yeah, we we all wrote lyrics. I mean, we all helped James uh, in the lyric department, and uh, it was a very very cool thing, for, at least for me to do because you know I had never really tried to write a lyric ever in my life, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And uh, you know it was through through uh, through uh, you know actually Bob Rock kind of like pushing pushing for for us to to help James uh, write lyrics that you know we actually. Got an opportunity to sit down and, and, and you know try to scribble down some some lines and kind of help James uh, uh, write some lyrics. Um, for me, it, it was it was it was a mind blowing experience because I, I discovered another way to contribute to the band. You know that was that was different from the, the way I usually uh, uh, contribute to the band, which yeah. is you know mainly through my guitar playing, and it kind of opened up a whole new world and. Uh, you know, nowadays, you know, lyrics to me mean so much more than they used to. I mean, other other bands' lyrics, you know, our lyrics. I mean, I just I have more of an awareness of 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 lyrics in general, and it, it's just a, an amazingly cool thing. Cool. And what songs uh, did you write lyrics? But there's you know there's lyrical con uh, contributions to, to to everything you know I mean there there's so many lyrics written I can't remember who wrote what <laughs> you know I mean you know it's just there, there's just a, it's just a great opportunity and you know I feel much more emotionally attached to the, to the songs now I mean I was always emotionally attached to the songs but it goes even deeper now yeah. Um, what do you expect from from the album when it comes out uh, within two weeks? Do you uh, think you're going to conquer the world again? But uh, because I think so. Or we don't own it already. Yeah, I thought well, we already conquered <laughs> in 1992 or something. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But still, still be the kings of metal. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. We're, we're, you know, we wrote this thing from the heart at the right time, and it just we want we want people to connect with it somehow you know it doesn't have to sell two zillion copies to to be successful it's a success already because it's joined us in a brotherhood that we've never haven't felt <laughs> ever before so yeah. it's a success yeah. you're completely happy with the new record already totally absolutely. Uh, beyond proud you know, i think that's great. the most important thing when you you're right music. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely right okay. okay let's wrap this up thank you very very right. much Cheers. we're good cool. thank you thanks man. appreciate it cool.